It was a cold Halloween night. The final day of Samhain, when the boundary between the two worlds dissolves. There is something different, something mysterious out there, and it's taking children on Halloween. On a full moon, it will raise the spirits of the dead when lit by a virgin on Halloween night. Don't you know what happens on Halloween? Our son was abducted last year on Halloween. All spells cast at Witch University become permanent at midnight on Halloween. People, mostly criminals, are placed in an enormous wicker cage shaped like an animal or giant. The druids set fire to the cage and the people burn to death. Purified by fire, the souls of the sacrificed make a pleasing gift to the Lord of the Dead. There's one magical, haunted evening each year when all the scary creatures come out to prowl through every neighborhood. In order to understand where our modern Halloween comes from, we must first take a step back in time. The word Halloween dates back to around the year 1745, and it means Saint's Evening, due to the fact that the Catholic Church designated November 1st as All Saints Day. So, All Hallows Eve is actually All Saints Eve. However, the origins of the holiday go back way farther than that. You see, the Catholic Church is well known for placing its own holidays directly over the ancient pagan holidays that people used to practice, and Halloween is no exception to that. Originally called Samhain, this night is considered sacred by the ancient Celtic people. It's said that spirits are able to roam freely as the veil between our world and theirs is at its thinnest point on the night of October 31st. Quote, Another great festival of the ancient Celts was Samhain, which was held on October 31st, on the eve of the pagan feast, the night known to us as Halloween. This was a wild and savage occasion, with human sacrifices offered and victims burned as offerings by the druids to the gods. End quote. Now, if we take a look at this book from the year 1870 entitled Irish Folklore, Traditions and Superstitions of the Country, the picture becomes a little more clear. Quote, Throughout these islands, great similarity appears to have prevailed regarding the sports and incantations practiced among our peasantry on the eve of All Hallows. Many of those customs are fast disappearing, but in former times we can scarcely doubt they had connection with certain pagan festivals. At present, they are partially continued as affording occasions for social amusements, especially amongst our young people. It was season appointed by the Druids for solemn intercession of the living and for the souls of dead persons who departed life. We are next informed that the Druids taught the Pythagorean doctrine regarding the transmigration of souls. These were called to judgment at this season by Baal Samhan. According to their merits or demerits in their past life, souls were assigned to enter bodies of the human or brute species. There were they to be proportionately happy or miserable during the next term of abode on this sublunary globe. But the punishment of the wicked persons might be alleviated by the employment of charms and magic arts, or through the means of sacrifices made by their friends to Baal. Sacrifices to Baal. Hmm. Where have we seen this before? Jeremiah 19.5 And have built the high places of Baal to burn their sons in the fire as burnt offerings to Baal, which I did not command or decree, nor did it come to my mind. 1 Kings chapter 22 verse 53 he served Baal and worshipped him, and provoked the Lord, the God of Israel, to anger in every way that his father had done. In Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 35, they built high places to Baal in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to offer up their sons and daughters to Moloch, though I did not command them, nor did it enter my mind that they should do this abomination, to cause Judah to sin. You see, the name Baal refers to an ancient deity who some may call Lucifer himself. The ancient Hebrew translation for the name Baal is, quote, Baal, and according to the Strong's Concordance, it occurs 81 times in the King James Version Bible, and it means Baal, Baal, a Phoenician deity. So, why are the ancient Celtic people performing rituals and sacrifices for an evil deity that's mentioned all throughout the Bible? Well. Let's continue reading. Quote, the day following the great festival, when sacrifices of black sheep are said to have been offered for departed spirits, while the Druids exhibited every possible description of charms or natural magic. How far the modern festivities or incantations of All Hallows' Eve have been derived from ancient Gentile rites or ceremonies would prove a question difficult to determine. But this time of year forms sort of era for its peculiar observances among our ancestors, alluding to All Hallows' Eve or Vigil of Salmon. 
one of their practices was to assemble with sticks and clubs, going about from one house to another collecting money, bread, cake, butter, cheese, and eggs for a feast. Young females go out at midnight and cast a ball of yarn into the bottom of a lime kiln whilst holding on by a thread. If the girl wind on and nothing hold the yarn, it is a sign the winder will die unmarried. If she feels it pull from her, she asks, who pulls my yarn? When it is supposed her future husband will give his name or appear to her, sometimes a demon will appear instead, and this latter event indicates that her death is not far distant. Well, I heard that on Halloween night, the boogeyman sneaks out and attacks kids who don't believe. These customs are almost entirely extinct. They were considered too closely allied with diablerie and magic to be used by any except the most reckless and unchristian practitioners. It is considered that on All Hallows' Eve, hobgoblins, evil spirits, and fairies hold high revel and that they are traveling abroad in great numbers. The dark and sullen Fuka is then particularly mischievous and many mortals are abducted to fairyland. Those persons taken away to the Raths are often seen at this time by their living friends and usually accompanying fairy cavalcade. If you meet the fairies, it is said, on All Hallows' Eve and throw dust taken from under your feet at them, they will be obliged to surrender any captive human being belonging to their company." End quote. So we have demonic beings roaming the earth, evil spirits, and fairies abducting people and taking them into another dimension. Could this holiday get any worse? A decade ago, Halloween night, he murdered 16 people, maybe more, trying to get to his sister. All right, the boogeyman can only come out on Halloween night, right? Look it up. On every other night of the year, more missing children are eventually found, but on Halloween it's different. On Halloween, the thorn symbol is actually a constellation of stars that appears from time to time on Halloween night. If you don't know the people very well, don't go into their homes. Most people enjoy having trick-or-treaters come to their doors. But there are a few people who will do things to hurt kids. The man known as the Halloween Killer could soon be set free, and there may be no way to stop it. Gerald Turner hits his mandatory release date in just 22 days. Other than registering as a sex offender, Turner would have no extended supervision and no parole or probation. Julia Fellow spoke to the distraught family of the girl he murdered on Halloween 44 years ago. Let's take a look at another book entitled Celtic Myths and Beliefs Quote, The Feast of Samhain was above all the most important day in the Celtic calendar. The Celts believed that the duration of the festival was a special and mystical time, an interstice between two distinct temporal periods during which the normal order of the universe is suspended and the barriers between the natural and the supernatural worlds are removed. All the gods and the dead move freely among the living, sometimes interfering with their affairs. End quote. Now, we just learned that ancient Celtic people considered Samhain to be, quote, above all, the most important date on the Celtic calendar. But what about in modern times? Isn't Halloween just about having fun now? Nobody does those evil things anymore, right? Wrong. What if I told you that modern day Satanists still consider Halloween to be the most important date on the calendar? For proof of this, let's go over to an official U.S. government website, the National Criminal Justice Reference Service, or NCJRS. Gov. Here we can find a document that tells us just how important Halloween is to Satanists. This document is called, quote, Satanic Cult Awareness, and it has some shocking information regarding modern day Halloween and the season around it. Here we are on page 17, where it says plain as day, quote, October 31st, Halloween, or Samhain, the first highest Satanic holiday, celebration of the beginning of the Celtic year, end quote. The first highest satanic holiday. What does that even mean? Well, we can find the answer to that on page 26 of this document. Quote, All Hallows Eve, Samhain, Halloween, Sabbat Festival, announcing onset of two most important Sabbats. Attempts are made to break the bond holding closed doors to the underworld. And next to that, it gives some details that are too disturbing to read out loud. these missing children on Halloween. What if they're all connected? A lot of nutcases come out on Halloween. That's why they fear, especially on Halloween. Strange. 
strange thing is, most of us have no idea what we are celebrating and why we do the things we do on Halloween night. No, I really don't, to be honest with you. No, yeah, I don't know, to be honest with you, why, why, why it started. It's just that it's a riot. I don't know, honestly, I don't. But I just know that Halloween is a good time for everybody to get out, put in a costume, relax, and have a good time. That's all that matters. No, I came from where uh, that, the vampire is from, from uh, Transylvania. Halloween began, we think. Uh, in the middle of Asia, like almost everything begins, well, sometimes it's a process. Uh, with a festival which celebrates the equinox, celebrates the end of the summer and the gathering period, the beginning of real winter. Um, and when this happens, you've got to do something about it. It's a dramatic moment, so you've got to do something. So you have a fire. The first thing you do is you have a fire, because this celebrates the burning of the old and the coming again of the sun eventually. And you have a dance, because a dance expresses the movement of the earth, the movement of the seasons, the way things move and shift and change. Uh, it's an act thing. And this really is the basis of what we now call Halloween. The Lord of the Dead ruled the night. His was the darkness. And all nocturnal creatures and invisible spirits sensed, dreamed, and imagined belonged to his world. On the last day of the Celtic year, he gathered the souls of those who had died during that year and led them to the other world. In those days, the phases of the moon were more obvious than the sun, and time was measured by a lunar calendar. The Celtic day began on what we now consider the eve of the previous day. So with the rising of the moon on October 31st, the great festival of Samhain began. Samhain was a strange time. The old year was dying and the new year was yet to be born. Somehow suspended or outside time, it was a transition of great vulnerability and danger. All natural laws fell away and the barrier between the worlds dissolved. Mortals could enter the world beyond and other worlds have been thrown among the living. Huge bonfires are lit on the hills to ward off evil spirits, while the Lord of the Dead leads the souls of the departed to the other world. To ensure a safe journey, offerings and sacrifices are made. Sacred to the Sun God, horses are sacrificed, and so are humans. People, mostly criminals, are placed in an enormous wicker cage shaped like an animal or giant. The druids set fire to the cage and the people burned to death. Purified by fire, the souls of the sacrificed make a pleasing gift to the Lord of the Dead. Each family then takes fire from the druid's sacred blaze back to the village to rekindle their hearts. Do you know why we wear costumes on Halloween? The Halloween custom of dressing up in costume baking candy, nuts, and apples goes back to the pagan New Year feast. That night, the ghosts thronging about the houses of the living were invited to join an enormous banquet. When the feast was over, villagers wearing masks and dressed as the souls of the dead paraded to the outskirts of town, leading the ghosts away. The trick part of Halloween custom comes from the many years when the night before Halloween was known as Mischief Night. That night, ghosts and fairies roamed the roads, curdling milk and riding people's horses to exhaustion. As time went by, any practical joke could be blamed on the little people. In Great Britain, the celebration of Halloween slowly died out, but in North America, it quickly became a popular tradition. But for the most part, it lost what little meaning had been retained in the process. But now, during the last two decades of the 20th century, a reinterest in pre-Christian religions is changing the way a growing number of North Americans are celebrating Halloween. Tonight has been a magical night. We saw a scary monster changed into a beautiful, happy, and safe little princess. How about you? Will you follow the lead of the little princess 
and have a safe and super Halloween this year. So there you have it. Proof that Halloween night is not just about costumes and candy. It's really about blood sacrifice, occult rituals, and communication with ancient spirits. I want to thank you all for watching this video. And until next time, God bless you all.